Hi Felters and welcome. In today's video we are going to do this 2D stroke 3D mushroom that sort of bursts out of the box frame. These frames are listed in my Amazon shop. I use them quite a lot for my 2D felts um, and we don't need the glass frame because the wool is sort of bursting out. This picture I did fairly recently and I really liked how I used the wool for the tree and the locks for the grass. So it just created some nice uh, visual effects. So we're going to use, this is a 100% um, wool felt base, or you could use pre-felt. If you use pre-felt, uh, use two layers because it stretches quite a lot, especially when you go to pull it off the mat. You need a big, wide, flat mat. This is a foam mat that I use. These are some art bats. If you go onto Etsy and search art bats, they will come up and it's like pre-coloured um, wools for you. And then this is a range of wools I've just pulled out from my basket of wools that I've got. So first up we're going to pin the uh, wool down to the mat. This is why this base mat is just so handy. Um, once you start felting it doesn't move that much anyway but just to begin with. And this is the um, frame that I'm going to keep using and then just planning out what I'm going to do. So that was a mushroom and then a tree to the left. Um, I don't really have, a, apart from that, that's all I have in my head. So I thought, well, we go blue background. So <laughs> this video, I was going to do a relaxing felt with me and put it all to music, but I changed my mind so much that you would have been like, Philippa, what are you doing? I don't understand. So I'm going to have to talk you through some of the things. So I was going to do a blue base and then I changed my mind. We're in the forest. I'm going to do a green base <laughs> and... Um, some of the green is going to be showing in the picture, so it's important to have the top half in the colour that you want it to be. If you were beside the sea, if you were in a field with the mushroom, then yes, a blue um, base would work. The base base, the wool felt, it doesn't really matter what colour that is, you're going to cover most of it up. Um, and then the bottom, I've just done a light, I had a light brown, but most of this is going to be covered up, but however, I do like to put um, a base of wool down all the way over it. So there we go, we have a rough idea of what we're doing. Then I'm going to map out the, the mushroom or mushrooms. I'm using my clover pen with 240 triangular needles in it. It's my most favorite pen that I'm gonna use for most of this felt. Um, so I'm just mapping out where do I want the mushroom to be? What sort of size? I want it to be fairly big. Um, and so I just put a stalk down and put a top on it and then just keep looking with the frame and seeing if it's the right size. So this is really a feel as you go, which is why I end up changing my mind so much, I suppose. But that's the whole point of it is that I want you to experiment. I don't want you to think, oh, I can't do this, you know, or um, just go on to Pinterest or Google, have a look at photos and just get ideas of where you want your tree, where you want your mushroom. I tried to put in another mushroom you'll see in a minute. Um, I built up the base of the tree, but the second mushroom just didn't look right. So I pulled it off. And next, we're just going to go all the way over and smooth everything nice and flat because not not in much detail. It took me about half an hour, but I just think it gives you a good base. Okay, so onto what we're going to do with the top of the mushroom. And I had this wool, I really like the effect. And I'm using a big thick needle and I'm really trying to attach it and it doesn't attach that well. So I've, I'm going to draw the line across the um, mushroom top just to define it so I know uh, where I'm going. So I did all of this. This is going to be sort of the underneath of the mushroom that shows. Um, and this is just uh, quite a thick, chunky white wool 
just um, felt it. It doesn't have to be really neat. It doesn't show any lines or anything. The stalk, you're going to leave there so it's going to uh, visibly go up and into it. So just work this all the way around. And I, I did literally have a sort of random selection of walls out of colours that sort of go together. I do think this picture would look great with a mushroom with a good strong colour like a red mushroom. Um, so I'm trying to attach this wool. I give it a rub. It's not attaching that well. Um, so I've pulled it all off. I'm going to start again. I went through uh, the other walls I had out and I came up. I wanted it to be a, a brown mushroom. Um, so I thought, right, we'll do the base. This is really easy, really simple. This is a light brown, thin wool. And I think if it's thin, it gives you the really good lines. So you don't want this to be too thick. And it's such an easy way to create a nice effect. Um, so you just line it up and down. The base of the mushroom is going to be covered. So we don't need that to be perfect. So I, um, And I definitely don't cut the strands as I go. I literally line them up and down really close. And... Most needles would be fine, but I happen to be using, I think, a 36. And then I've popped onto a 40 there and literally line it up and down. You might have to overlap the top um, in because the top is thinner than the bottom. And then once I got right towards the end, um, I just sort of uh, extended the bottom right down there, sort of folded it back so it made it a bit wider. But as I said, most of the base is going to be uh, covered up so it's not going to show but I think this gives a really nice easy effect for the base of the mushroom and then we're going to go on to the top and I came up with a color that I really liked it was a sort of multicolored or a variegated wool so um, this is the wool itself so I think it's quite a nice effect but I didn't want it to be the same as the base it's all about I think just using a range of colors um, that really helps and then you just literally um, I've shown you a close-up so I'm bunching up the wool a little bit uh, just so that it doesn't show as me sort of doing lines all around although you could do it depends what kind of effect you want to create but like I said I think this would look really good in a nice red mushroom so I might be doing some more things in the future um, so just uh, fill in all of the mushroom and you can see uh, because of the variegated color, I think it works quite well and it's definitely different to the base. And you can see where we built it up. It's becoming 3D. So trim that off. And so it looks quite good. Now I decided to line it just to make the edges stand out. I don't necessarily know whether all of my extra bits made the mushroom look a lot better. Um, but I went for it anyway. So I've lined all of the edges just so it stands out. I think it does look nice for the base. So yeah, you need to definitely go across that top bit, Pippa. <laughs> Let's put that in there. There we go. And then, um, so I've lined all of the edges. And then I decided to do some shading underneath the base. So this bit, I'm not sure whether it worked. But, you know, in the end, I think it looked all right. I pulled a little bit. I put some going around the bottom and then I pulled it off later on um, and then I wanted to do some highlights so again fiddling with this I did a thick piece and then I sort of partially cover it up later on do a thin piece I think the thinner wool worked better so I just took my chunky wool and split the strands up so I did two little strands there um, I did a little bit under there, didn't like it, pulled it off. So trial and error, people. But this is, you know, the fun thing with needle fighting. You could just pull it off. It's just really easy. And so I put a thin strand because I think that correlated better with the thinner strands on the stalk. And then I covered up <laughs> a little bit of the thick strand. Um, but yeah, it all works in the end. I, You just get the idea. I mean, I cannot paint to draw or draw. So I am just just giving things a go here and then the tree so with the tree base um this is a green wool that i've got it's quite nice i don't know where i got it from um and it's just a multicolor sort of green base and i so i just up and down put that underneath but we are going to cover most of this so only bits of it are going to show so it didn't have to be really neat um when you do see how I've done the tree here with a brown wool, I think it's really nice. 
and I'll, you go up and down, you make it quite random. So you go down three quarters, up a bit, down a bit, down to the bottom, and most of the bottom is going to be covered as well. But then every now and again, I would do a little swirl as if it was a sort of whirl in the tree and then go up and round and then back down. So it's just as random as you want it to be with a couple of swirls. I think it gives quite a nice effect doing it like this and it's really easy to do. So as you can see, I'm not even cutting strands off. I think the first time I did this, I cut little strands and then I thought, why am I cutting it? And <laughs> just keep it all in one and just keep going up, down, up, down and just expanding the base a little bit. So I'm always putting the frame back on and checking I'm happy. Then I took a lighter brown and again, I think this really helps to give a little bit of detail. And I've done this very randomly and not very much of it, you know, not too much across the tree, but it just gives the um, effect of bits of bark. And then also, and again, checking. So this is that wool that I used for the base and I'm just sort of pulling it apart now and it gives a nice sort of mossy effect. But I do um, use some curly locks over the top of this because this looked just a bit too similar to the rest of the picture. So I wanted to change up the textures a bit more. And then I tried to do a tiny bit of highlight down the front of the tree. Again, just to add a little bit of interest. I don't know how much it worked. Um, so next up, I'm going to do the curly locks. So if you search curly locks, this is just showing you the walls that I have. This is a beehive weave that we do use. Um, that's from Barn to Yarn, that one. So, you know, Etsy, there's loads of things. And then I've got these three wools that I'm going to use for sort of grassy effects. So I put the curly locks, you just cut them off at the base. Um, and I've put them all over the bottom of the tree. And I like the difference in the textures with this. I think it works really well. I put a bit more green in. And then I've taken the three wools, cut short strands and... We're just literally going to felt through the middle so they stick up and then I do felt them up a little bit and this is just the first test. So I've just popped this down the bottom to see if I'm happy Then I'm going to carry on and having the three colours I think works really really well. So you start at the top and you work your way down and we're going to go all the way down the bottom of the mushroom and all the way across and it does take a little bit of time but it's not that long and I think the effect is great so we're just going to do a little bit more of that So here I've done a bit more grass and then I went ahead and played with that beehive yarn, which I will show you in a little bit more detail. I tried to make it sort of look like the top of the tree and I'm really happy with the composition now. I've settled for the mushroom being slightly to the left. You wouldn't want it central. Um, I j just a, a mushroom in the centre of the picture I think looks a bit boring. So I've tried to make it a bit off to one side and um, now we're just going to finish the rest of the grass. So I kind of got a bit poor doing the grass and had to play for doing the top of the tree. But with the beehive yarn, it's got sort of lumps on it. You could do anything. You could take some green wools and just twist them and make sort of lumps. And again, I just wanted it to contrast with the textures. Um, I was thinking about cutting out little bits of um, felt and making leaves, but I had no green felt. So that's another thing you can do. So here we are, I finished the wools, I gave it a little trim, and I'm really happy with that. And I feel that the top left of the picture is a little bit lacking. 
So that's where we're going to put a load more. Now, my hand was in the way for most of this filming, so I'm sorry it's not as clear as it could be, but I literally took this wool, gave it a little twist where the thicker part was, and it ended up being a little ball. It was quite tricky to get it to stay in, um, but I do, I like using what I've got. Um, so yeah, I, I think it worked quite well. And as I said, this is, I think it's called a beehive yarn. It's quite expensive. I got it at, I think, Yarndale. But yeah, I'm really happy with the composition and the different textures. So the only last thing I was going to do is just pop a dark um, green around the mushroom to make it pop. And I think I did this in my Fox tutorial that I followed with Danny Ives about making things sort of pop a bit. And I think it's it works OK. Um, it's not maybe not necessary. You could do it in a lighter color. I think light wouldn't work because of the color of the mushroom. So I just took a darker green carded wool and placed it all around the outside of the mushroom just to give it a bit of definition depth. I don't know, um, but I think it looks better for it. So I hope you can see that by playing around um, and like if I didn't like this, I could just pull it off the darkness, but I, I think it worked really well. So it was it was better. And you could even put a few more colors into the background if you wanted. And then I spent quite a while just going over all of the flat base and just felting it finely because I think it looks better. Um, and, and this is it. That's the picture, really. And then the fun bit is um, you've got uh, just checking again so it's all flat um, all through the base of it so the fun bit's pulling it off <laughs> it's really it's just really nice pulling things off and, and then it's all done it's lovely and it's all woolly on the back um, so I sort of support it as I pull it off and that's how the wool felt is a lot easier because it just holds it um, if you're pulling pre-felt it might rip if it was a single layer so but if you've only got pre-felt you just double the layer up and there we go, it's all off. And you always get the little picture on the back. Look how many fuzzies there are that you've felted through. So there we go. And then I'm just gonna trim it to the correct size so it fit in the frame because it was a little bit um, big on one edge. And then we're gonna, I use um, a glue to glue it to the base. Um, make sure the base is the right way up because I have definitely glued things on upside down before now. And I sort of followed the line of the tree and the mushroom with the most glue. And then I just did a little bit less um, for the other areas. But you do have to do the corners and make sure that the corners are stuck on. But I think, it, you know, it glues really, really well. So and so I popped it on. I did have a quick check. It needed to be slightly to one side to fit in properly. And then put the frame on and pull out any bits of grass. And then you do it up at the back. Like I said, these are in my Amazon shop. They're really good frames. I really, really like them. And there we go. A little bit of um, trimming, a little bit of checking. It's it's all working. And, and yeah, I I think it's a lovely effect. It actually looks a lot better in real life, I have to say. Um, part of me was a bit worried that the mushroom was too big and the tree was too small. But I, I like it. I like the textural effect. And there's the other one. So as with all of my tutorials, you can um, make your own. If it's for personal use, that's fine. If you wanted to sell your item, just make sure you credit me as the designer. But do check because a lot of um, creators don't allow you to do that. But And I reserve the teaching rights. So thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. And we'll see you again soon. Take care, everybody.